for us, every day is a new opportunity to make sure our first impressions are always our best and to see possibilities on the horizon. To make our facilities and services more accessible and find freedom all around us. With a location proximity to active markets, with a liberal air transportation policy, that daily pursuit is how we turn everyday opportunities for you. For all destination marketing support, customized packages for new existing airlines and operators, and for a highly ranked tourist destination, the Gambia Civil Aviation Authority is here to serve. We regulate air transport, operate and manage BIA technical requirements, merge with commercial considerations. We have experienced and well-trained aviation professionals to cater for your needs. For investment opportunities in building airport hotels, shopping malls, playground for children, do contact us on 4472-831, 4472-893. Gambia Civil Aviation Authority. We go beyond daily. Steward & Co. Solicitors, a legal excellence firm in London that can help you with all aspects of your legal work. If you are looking at immigrating to the United Kingdom, Steward & Co. can help you to set up business, buy houses in the UK, and will deal with all your legal works from start to finish. For all your general immigration work, we can help you with that as well. If you apply for any form of visa, where the student visas, settlement visas, marriage visas, or a child wanting to come to the United Kingdom to settle with the family, we can help you to achieve your goals. Stewart & Co. Solicitors, a legal excellence firm specializing in conveyancing, immigration, litigation, family law, personal injury, licensing, no win, no fee. Contact us today at www.sk-solicitors.com. And do small or big projects with the same dedication and commitment as we do. With the reputation as the leading printing company in the country, when it comes to major projects and innovative solutions, we always deliver in high quality, thus receiving the trust and confidence of our clients. From the moment your order is placed to when it is delivered, we believe in exceeding expectations from the sales manager to the production team, the account manager, and the person delivering your material. We have state-of-the-art equipment and a highly experienced and competent workforce that enables us to deliver top quality work on time. At reasonable prices, we provide our clients with multiple solutions right from conceptualizing, designing, printing, binding, publishing, and distribution. For all your printing requirements, we are strategically located at the Sankumsila Highway, the Gambia Printing and Publishing Corporation. We print what you desire. Introducing Gamtel Corporate Internet for home use. See who everyone at home can be online at the same time and for less than you think. Now daddy can be home early and mommy and dad with the family can all have fun together. You can now complete your work at home with our stable, secure and super fast home broadband fixed wireless internet. Home internet couldn't be faster. Download, stream videos, research, play games, learn online and work from the comfort of your home. You can do with the internet. Join Gumtel Sihu today and enjoy the fastest home wireless broadband internet at an affordable monthly subscription. Gumtel, creating a brighter future in communications. <laughs> That's my only one, my dear good thing. Wow. You are not going to One hundred thousand dollars. No, 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 I uh, gaming game be la lal. Lal na chilu di. Wow. I'm gonna am Kwarte, am Kente, am Chirse. Wow. Man am nak Taiji. Wow. Kente bila. Kaj jackpot be pas. Kente moy lan. Kente man am moy juro mi fasi. Wow. Man am be am nak Kwarte. Moy moy niente fasi. Am Chirse. Yeah. 
tay nak xaliss bi da gëna yok lu tax jackpot bëlé dañ ka tégat ci bi manam juroomi fass ci boko jappé ci ordre moy risque nga désordre bi sax day fay hmm ah Yoi mom non la deme da ngay dem nek jie amna luma yaaka gis na sien sien ki kess ku yu ndaw yi ci bi dekk bi mais dal dama ni li mom amul xaliss dang ci def sa xaliss da jël wéccé rek sanni ko fa xol jëmbat la ah la ilaha illallah yow yow li nga wax ni tay ji bu yalla dogalon ma gagné ko lu mu gatt 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 fim toll ni bo gagné won 100000 dollars wow noy def wa noy def xam yow sama xarit nga wa damay fexé nga ray say non ci nan lu mu gatt gatt 50000 dollars way eh eh tierno 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 wo wala bilas lan lu xew ni sabay gay deno sam bab gay lu ko ray 50000 dollars lako bo ma gagné non ci gima lo yondi dama ko koy jox mu daanu ni sama xew man waxu mako mo waxe won lako non yow lako waron informer lako yow ya ko gagné ya gagné jappone Dreaming of owning a property in a prime location with great proximity and fantastic neighborhood? EJ Investments Sanyang Seaview Estate is the best choice you have been waiting for. Our Sanyang Seaview Estate is approximately 15 minutes drive away from the busy hub of Brusubi roundabout and into the heart of nature where you can have a peaceful and relaxed lifestyle with your family. You can buy a finished four bedroom story with five year flexible payment plan or a service plot with two year payment plan. an option with over 300 homes you will enjoy big tar roads with covered drainage modern electrification with solar street lights gated entrance with security post and a breath catching experience of our beautiful sea view and lake view you can own a home today at our sanyang sea view estate call us today on 446-4838 or 325-9220 visit our website on ejinvestments.net EJ Investments first in property Fe lem po warugal la ci kep ko xamne doomi rew mi nga ak ñu fi dekk bu fekke ne ci at mi sa kom kom wessuna ñaar fuk ak ñenti junney dalasi mbete wer bu nek di nga am lu tollu ci ñaari junney dalasi lem po ci la nguur gi di sukande ko ngir liggey yokute rew mi GRA moy bank has bu nguuri Gambia sas ngir mu feye ku lepp luy lem po ci bi rew mi betaxna GRA di yegal fey kati lem po yi ne warugal la pour ñu fey lu ñu naan withholding tax on contract payment Ma nam bep contract bu way joxe te ci bi rew mi lañu to kon xali ci contract bi ngeen nangoto war nga ci wañi ci xayma témer bu nek fuka bu féké ne contract bi dekku ci bi rew mi bu boba di nga wara wañi témer bu nek fuka ak jurom li moy lempo bu ñu naan with holding tax on contract payment li moy lempo bi nga xamné yow mi joxe contract waru gal la nga wol batiku dem fey ko ci makani diaré tax office bu la gëna jégé mbété ci banki diaré jagléel pour fey lempo war nga djebal lempo bi ci diri fuki fan ak djurom ganaw bi nga wagné ci xali ci contract every young gambian dream of a university degree he wants a good paying job after graduation a pretty wife and ultimately own a dream home what if i can't afford my desired dream home and that is why you need to visit universal properties we specialize in customer satisfaction we listen to every of our clients needs when we show the properties to our client before you know it you hear the client saying i like this house this is the room that cuts my heart and most of the time they cling to the door never to let go most clients want to close the deal right there and that is why we always have their contracts in the trunk of our cars we walk at our clients pace no haggle no hazard we waiting for you at our office in Kairaba Avenue here in the Gambia have you run out of cash power do you want to transfer funds to your family or do you want salary advance without coming to the bank Your banking services have just been brought to you on your mobile phone. Download and install from your App Store or Google Play Trust Bank's mobile app. Simply search for TBL Mobile App and follow the instructions. You can access the following services: funds transfer, cash power purchase, forex rates inquiries, mobile airtime top-up, mini statement, balance inquiry, TBL app. It's the only app that allows you to take salary advance and many more. You can also interact with your customers using our USSD code by dialing star 533 hash. 
at Trust Bank, we bring innovation that is useful to you, our valued customer. With our mobile app and USSD, banking is at your fingertips. Trust Bank Limited, proudly Gambian. Sophie, me ola bu sel te ner. Bax na ci halal ak mak yep amna calcium, iron, protein ak vitamin yu bari. Sophie, full cream powder milk la amna 20 gram, 200 gram ak 400 gram. Kuko nyam do tuko bayi. Sophie, proudly Gambian. Better and stronger as the sole ground operator at the Banjul International Airport. With an expansion in travel services, customers are assured of GIA's capacity to cater for all their travel needs, provided by professional, experienced, and ever smiling staff. GIA's Hajj package and services, by far the best in the country give the customers the opportunity for a memorable Hajj experience. For a more efficient cargo services, GIA means business as it launches its new multi-million dollar ultra-modern cargo complex to revitalize and stimulate air transport. GIA, the pride of the Gambia. Hello and welcome to another edition of uh, the Kirfatu. Uh, of course, tonight I have a very big guest, um, Mr. Francis Ben uh, Kayafele. It's a household name in Sierra Leone. Uh, he has served as public relations officer and spokesperson from 2012 to 2013. He has vast experience in corporate and commercial litigations, uh, practice uh, in the superior courts, and has also appeared in high-profile um, cases in Sierra Leone. Uh, Mr. Um, Kayavele is the uh, chairman of the Anti-Corruption Commission in Sierra Leone. Uh, Mr. Kayavele, welcome to Kefat for the first time. Thank you very much. Communication, connectivity is everything. We ensure that the links never sleep. Quantities and qualities, all in our data service, providing efficient, reliable voice and data service. We believe if you're not up to speed, then you're going backwards. Communications have to flow as fast as the speed of light. Whatever business you're in, having someone who understands your needs is critical. That is why we just don't offer you technology, we offer you solutions. Enjoy Gamsel's internet broadband anytime, anywhere. Your national operator, Gamsel Yaibarom. Welcome to Gambia. Yes, thank you. I'm and loving how it are, here. How are you feeling since you arrived in the country? I think it's a great country. Isn't it? They don't call it the smiling coast for nothing. I have experienced it. The people are warm, the hospitality is good, and they have great food too. I like it here. Uh, wow. And what's the purpose of your visit? Well, I came in, the Pan-African Foundation for Leadership um, organized a summit. Uh, they call it the African-Europe Summit, Leadership Summit for Young Leaders. So I came in to speak at that summit to a group of young people coming from Europe and Africa, mm -hmm. but also to receive an award as uh, one of the 30 most influential young leaders on the globe. Wow, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, for those of my viewers who don't really know who you are, tell us more about yourself and some of the work you have done over the past years. Well, I am a lawyer. I became a lawyer in 2007. Mm -hmm. I practiced mostly in corporate commercial litigation. Mm -hmm. 
but I later moved to some constitutional issues and high-profile criminal cases, white-collar crimes. And um, I specialize both in law and economics. I have a master's degree in law and economics. I also specialize in comparative constitutional law and international human rights mm -hmm. and administrative law. Uh, my work really was more as a lawyer, but recently, after my appointment as Commissioner of the Anti-Corruption Commission of Sierra Leone, I then went into really helping my country launder the image of our, launder our image globally from one of the most corrupt countries to one of the countries that is doing well in fighting and controlling corruption, and that is what I have been doing. So I'll start with uh, when you were a lawyer, of course, for a country that has been battling with uh, one of the world's most uh, civil war in the, in the world and uh, being named, as, like you just mentioned, one of the corrupt um, countries in our sub-region, just like many other African countries. How was it like being a lawyer in that kind of environment? Yes, I mean, I, I, personally, I have always been somebody who felt that. As a country, we are blessed. We have many resources. We have good human capital. We have um, everything it takes. Our soil is one of the most fertile on the planet. It rains. Uh, the sunshine is good. So I have always felt like we, our potential is way bigger than where we are. And a lot had to be done about it. So even as a lawyer, I tried um, as best as possible to try to bring out, whilst I was practicing as a lawyer, I also try to balance it out with bringing out the ills of society, the wrongs that the political class are doing to the, to the people, and to try to create a generation of conscious citizens, a kind of um, uh, people who believe that our destiny, we have to invent it, we have to create it ourselves, mm -hmm. instead of having to wait for someone else to do it for us. So as a lawyer, it was difficult. We have a corrupt judiciary, we have a corrupt political class, we have a corrupt elite, we have a corrupt people. Mm -hmm. uh, I found it difficult to navigate in that setting, and I had always wanted to do something about it, until, as God would have it, after 10 years, I was appointed commissioner of the Anti-Corruption Commission. Wow. So, so, so just take us through maybe one of the most uh, remarkable cases, high-profile cases you had to deal with as a lawyer. And I know that you had uh, worked um, uh, on uh, cases like the white collar cases and also charging people that had been charged for murder, working on cases like that. What would be most one of the cases that was very remarkable for you in your career? For example, the current minister of... Um uh, he was the Minister of Foreign Affairs. He's now Sierra Leone's permanent representative to the UN, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Ali Kaba. Mm -hmm. All right, he was accused of bigamy. Oh. He was married to an existing minister then. Mm -hmm. And that minister then reported him to the police that he was married to his wife in the US when he got married to her. And he was arrested and put in prison. And it was a case where everybody thought like, no, he cannot survive this. And by then, he was a known opposition figure. Yeah. In fact, he, was, he had declared to run for the presidency of Sierra Leone. Then I came in and put up a robust defense for him. The entire country, it was like a, a, something that came from, from a movie script. The country was following. Everybody was following. Absolutely. And at the end of the day, he was found not guilty of bigamy because he had a good case which we presented against all odds. So that was one of the remarkable cases, but there were many cases which I pursued. Some of them I pursued as far as going to the Supreme Court, really, really important constitutional cases. So this was the kind of, it was my life really, getting involved in, in such controversial cases, cases wow. and doing something about and it. And then in 2018, uh, President Madabio um, um, appointed you as the chairman of the Anti-Corruption Commission, yes. which was an act of, you know, was uh, established as an act of parliament. Yes. So why do you think he turned to you for such a responsibility, knowing the, the, the practices that took place in the former regime, allegedly? Why did you think he turned to you? Yes, uh, when, when the president, His Excellency Brigadier Dr. Julius Madabio became president, I was studying in the U.S. I had taken leave from work mm -hmm. and went to do a second master's degree in the U.S. as a Fulbright scholar. So I was on exams, and um, I got a call from the secretary to president that asking me, when are you coming back? Um, we have taken over. We need somebody to head the anti-corruption commission. And the consensus within the country 
and uh, even among we, the political elite, is that you should be the one. Uh, it was a bold move. I remember speaking to the assistant to the president then. He had only one question for me. The president wants somebody. All of us have vouched to him that you are the right man for the job. But he's asking one question. Do you have the backbone to do it? Because he really wants a robust person to lead the fight against corruption. And I said, if you have assured him that I have the backbone, the only thing I can do for you is to assure you that I, I will never let you down. So, so, so my point is, this is a huge task. You know how Africans, we are all Africans. Yeah. How easy was it for you to just take up the decision to say, look, I'm going to do it? Well, yes, was it, it wasn't just... easy. First of all, because I was engaging in, in kind of an advocacy for the people of Sierra Leone, uh, there were people who were like, if you leave and now take up this job, yeah. who is going to be there to speak for us? Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, so there was all that. But I consulted with people. I have my own mentors. I spoke with them. I had my own close friends. I spoke with them. And I also prayed about it. And uh, I had this feeling that I have been talking, I have been writing, I have been agitating. No, it's For the time. first time, I have an opportunity to do something about it. There is no office apart from the presidency that is as important as the office that will fight against corruption. That is where the heart of the people is. That is where the social revolution that we all aspire for sits. So if I have been come, called upon to lead it, I had no problem. The moment I finished exam on Saturday the 7th of May, on the 9th, I was on the plane to come back to Sierra Leone to take up this job. Wow. Uh, after you assuming, before assuming this office, uh, the Anti-Corruption Commission have been labeled as a, a political, um, I don't know, a political, lacking the political will to tackle alleged crimes. In fact, uh, people never believed in the commission. So how was it easy for you to, did you believe in that, did you have this perception of the commission as well, as, well, a, as, a, as a, an ordinary citizen? When I took, when I was called upon to lead, I knew the challenge that lied ahead. Yeah. I knew that the commission had been there for 18 years, the citizens. Mm -hmm. In fact, at the time I took up, the citizens' belief in the fight against corruption was 19%. Yeah. That was how low it was. Okay? And uh, various indices were showing that we were at the bottom of fighting corruption. We were failing the MCC control of corruption scorecard at 49% when the, the average was 50-something percent. So I knew that the first thing I have to do, and if you look at the speech that I gave when I, was, I took oath before the president at State House, I did say that the first challenge was to shift the citizens' perception yeah. from not believing in the fight against corruption to make them believe. I had given myself that I was going to do that in one year. And what but are you doing trust differently? Me, and what are you doing differently to change within, the perception? Within two months, mm -hmm. that shift happened. I never believed it. Oh, wow. It was just really bringing in a kind of... You see, the fight against corruption is rewarded by the effort you put in. Your mm -hmm. strategy, how you communicate it to the people, how they believe what you are saying. It's not really about the result. It's about that conscientious effort that comes from within. So what I did when I got to the ACC, firstly, I met the morale in the commission very low. The staff were not very well motivated because of the experiences they have had before. They needed leadership in many ways. Some of them were afraid because of the political ramifications. They had just been a change of government. Mm -hmm. So they thought that when I'm coming in as a political appointee, of the SLPP, I am coming basically to start looking for everybody who is not SLPP in fact, and things you have like been that. So of the that. first thing I did mm -hmm. was to close my ears to the outside and bring unity within within a week. Within. Brought them together, assured them, told them nobody is going to be disadvantaged. All we have to remind ourselves is that we are doing service for the people of Sierra Leone and let us get on with it. So the moment I got them to rally behind me, it was easy for us to now start implementing the mandate of the commission within section 7 of the anti-corruption act that is to do everything necessary to prevent and eradicate corruption so we we developed a very solid public relations system we started going after people who they believe in fact the first thing i did was to call in the, the former vice president and the former minister of mines these were things which people were never thinking would be happen and then came the indictment that had been filed against them. I reviewed it, made it stronger, and sent it back to court. People thought that this would not happen. We started going all spheres of light from the judiciary 
to ministries, to former governments, officials who were corrupt, and we started doing it. And then, within a short time, we started recovering. Because when I started all this, because I came in at the transitional time, they said this was a political witch hunt. Okay? Yeah. But then I applied a strategy. I bring you in. I, I, we investigate you very swiftly. We say, you stole one billion loans. Mm -hmm. I give you the option to pay it back within the soonest possible time or we take drastic measure against you. And people started seeing for the first time politicians are bringing money themselves. Wow. Within six months, we had recovered one million United States dollars. I mean, within one year, four months, we had recovered oh, nearly two million United States dollars. And that recovery was more than everything that had been recovered by this commission for the 18 years yes. that existed before I came in. So the people of Sierra Leone saw the conviction rates rate started going up. going up. We used to have three, four, five convictions per year. We had 18 just within 2018. So people saw for themselves that the fight against corruption was producing real-time results. But apart from that, another strategy we did was to bring the people along, okay? The evidence and facts that we had, we are not fighting corruption in hiding. You said you follow me on Twitter. I we did. put it there. Yes. We put out a press release saying that Mr. XYZ has been accused of doing XYZ. We investigated him. We found out that this is how exactly he was doing, and this is what he's responsible for. In yes. fact, he has agreed to pay. He has paid. So this made the people of Sierra Leone for the first time to believe in the fight against corruption. And before we could think about it, the perception that was as low as 19%, shot up to 70%. All the international and global indexes where we are not doing better, the control of corruption where we are 49%, we high. went to 71%. Wow. Afro-barometer, citizens' belief in the fight against corruption came from 47%, 43%, to 70%. Wow. So, this sent the right message within the population, and then that was the beginning of the social transformation that we are now working on. Your fight, your fearless and radical approach to fighting corruption is visible. And um, you have gone after top government officials who everyone thought were, thought were untouchable. This might be, must be a heck of a job, isn't it? It is, it is. In fact, what we did was because when I came in, we were going after people who were in the former regime. Okay? Yeah. The first case that we had in the current regime, that was some people we are giving money to do sensitization for the commissions of inquiry that was set up. And some people in the current government ate that money. In three days, they were tried and found guilty, and they were sentenced to a custodial sentence of three years imprisonment the current without government. a fine. Within the current government. Wow. So even that, the citizens were like, whoa, okay, we were not expecting this. Custodial, straight, we went for them. Three days, they were found guilty. And that is how we are continuing. If you know, for example, recently the master and registrar of the high court has been charged on two different indictments for things done with the resources of the judiciary. These were things that the people of Sierra Leone were not thinking about. I mean, who goes after somebody in the judiciary as high as that? But these are things we are doing. And when we are doing it, we are bringing the facts. But apart from that, yeah. we are also doing things like sting operations, okay? Where we send in, we have the Scorpio Squad who are fierce investigators who have only one instruction, do everything necessary to suppress corruption. So they are going in, catching people red-handed, video of the activities are put online and everybody can see so these are all ways we are trying to see to capture the minds of the people but the real strength of the fight against corruption is not all this okay the real fight against corruption lies in the prevention measures that we put in place, place. after doing this but we needed to do this we needed to show a strong fight against corruption. We needed to capture the, the, the attention of the citizens. We needed to shift their perception to where, from where it was to where it is now. But now we have to backstop it with serious public education drive for the people to ensure that um, we do not go back to where we were. And also we have to invest in prevention to remove opportunities for corruption, to remove those things that encourage corruption, to try to make sure that the incentives for correction are not there. So, for example, we have to invest in the appropriate technology and software that makes corruption detection very easy, easy. that makes access, for example, we are still operating a cash-based economy, economy where people put money in bags banks. and take them to yeah. banks. But if you set up a system where nobody touches money, the room for corruption is lowered. So these are all things we are doing, really, to transform is the, the country. Is the government committed to... Um, 
putting of these reforms because in fact just like you said if we don't have a civil service reform if we don't have a good systems in place uh, the structures are not independent uh, your job will not be very effective because at the end of the day if people can have access to cash when they're going to the banks or when people pay their taxes they pay to people and they're giving receipts which are manually controlled these are the loopholes how why corruption is chronic in Africa is the government committed to um, putting in these structures to help your work four things have to be there for the fight against corruption to succeed in mm -hmm. any country. Yeah. It could be the Gambia, it could be Nigeria, it could be South Africa. It does not matter where. Yeah. Okay? Four things have to be there. One, there has to be a strong law. The law has to be there to set the foundation yeah. for the fight against corruption. The next thing that has to be there is the political will. Yes. The people who are within the body politic have to want the fight against corruption to happen. Yeah. It may not be 100% and it does not have to be 100%. 100%. It just has to be above 50%. Okay? The third thing that has to be there is the presidential will. The president, whosoever is president of that country, has to want for the fight against corruption to succeed. Mm -hmm. That has to be almost 100%. Yeah. Okay? If you have the strong law, you have the political will, and you have the presidential will, the next thing that is needed is the courage of those in charge of fighting corruption to actually take it on. Because nobody wants not to be corrupt. In fact, our nature as human beings is to be corrupt. corrupt. That is our human tendency. It's about those who are now fighting corruption to take advantage of those three factors, the political will, the presidential will, and the strong laws to be able to produce the results that they can for the country. And that is what is happening in Sierra Leone. We have a president who believes in the fight against corruption, who wants it to succeed. Mm -hmm. The political will is driven by the presidential will. Yeah. So they are coming along, whether or not they want it, because they are really our clients, they are the targets of what we do. Yeah. But because that will is there, there is a balance of it. Our laws in Sierra Leone are among the strongest in Africa yeah. for the fight against corruption. Mm. And now all they needed was the leadership. The leadership. And I have come with the team at the ACC who mm. are also very committed to the fight against corruption. That is how we are taking things to another level. So the political will is there. The resources may not be there. For example, prevention is not cheap. Yeah. The software that mm. are needed for banks, for example, yeah. for finance institutions to do things for may be extremely expensive. Yeah. Yes, the expertise that is needed. Mm -hmm. In fact, for example, in Botswana, somebody told me just one consultant to help them implement one of the anti-corruption software was one million dollars. Okay. Wow. But if the will is there, it's little by little. You take it once at a time. You make sure you change, and that change will be able to bring in results. Because right now in Sierra Leone, what we have done is to close the loopholes. Mm -hmm. And the more loopholes you close, the more revenue mobilization there will be. And the more revenue mobilization there is, the more they are capable of reinvesting into the economy to make sure that corruption loopholes are closed. So it's a circular flow, really, which has to be there. But the government has to be with you to succeed. And recently we have seen you go after teachers, um, the commission going after teachers over exam malpractices. Tell us about it because this is common in every West African country. Let's say in every country, even in America, right? Recently we have seen parents being taken to court because they, the examination malpractices. So tell us about this exercise that you go, your commission is undertaking right now. You see, if you want to destroy a nation, mm -hmm. just lower the standard of education. Okay make people not to merit their certificates, mm. makes people not to study to pass, make everything to be commercialized, mm -hmm. you can destroy that nation within a matter of few years. Therefore, because I am in charge of fighting corruption and I, am know, I know that the political class that we go after, the educated elite who have been inflicting harm on the people of Sierra Leone are a product of that educational system. So I just shifted the spotlight a little on that system, okay? And within two weeks, it was just two weeks of sting action for the current, the ongoing exam that has just been completed. We were able to produce the rot that we sit on as a country. Wow. I am sure you saw some of the evidence online, online because what I did was to make sure that people, you see, teachers are like a kind of sacred cow in every system mm. because teachers educate us. Everybody is a product of a teacher. We have parents who are teachers, who went to schools and everything. So we, we have this sympathy for them. Yeah. It's easy for people to think that you are picking on them because they are the weakling of the society. Yeah. 
But once we put out the evidence of teachers taking money, principals taking money to assist students to pass, take them to special rooms during exams, make them to be taking exams at 11 p.m. at night, taking them to special houses to take exams, sleeping with some of the students who cannot pay to help them to cheat. Once we put all that evidence out there, the population saw that this is a crisis. The president, I'm sure you followed the debate, the president, the mm -hmm. council of principals, who are yet, everybody came about it. Yeah. But we had to take drastic measures, okay? And that is one of those things we did. We did not just arrest them. We make sure we publicly shame them for the people to see. There's a saying in my country that they say, kill dog before dog, let no dog know say die day. You should mm. kill a dog before a dog. Yeah. So the dog can know that there is death. That's death. And oh. that is the only way you can change the other dog's okay. behavior. Okay. And that is exactly what we did with this. And it drew so much controversy. But we are focused on trying to tackle corruption, not just from the top, but from the bottom. And the teachers and the students are exactly the beginning of everything. If we get it right there, it will be easy to deal with the top. How bad is corruption in, in Sierra Leone? Is it endemic? How bad is it? Oh, by the time I came in, Fatu, the corruption level was cataclysmic. The country was dying. We were, in 2013, we were rated the most corrupt country in the world. Wow. Yes, by Transparency International. 2013, the most corrupt country in the world. We are even more corrupt than Nigeria. We are even more corrupt than Afghanistan. Wow. Can you imagine that? That's bad. So, something had to be done. Yeah. And that is what we are doing. But today, we can look at the statistics and start smiling because things are changing. Because the fight against corruption, like I said at the beginning, rewards the effort, not really the result. It's mm -hmm. what are you doing about it? It's if people are corrupt, let them look over their shoulders. Okay? But the main formula to defeat the fight against corruption, even for the Gambians, yeah. I have to say this. Yeah. Okay? Because I've been speaking to a lot In of fact, young I'll Gambians. I'll come to that because we, the president has said they're going to table. You the, have to yeah. make corruption a high risk and a low return venture. Hmm. I have to repeat this again. You have to make corruption a high risk and a low return venture. If you don't do that in any country, you cannot fight corruption. You have to make it risky. So when a person makes a decision to engage in it, first of all, fewer people have to be willing to take that risk because they know when they are arrested. For example, when in Sierra Leone, we frogmarked those ones to the cutting tree and displaced them in handcuffs for one hour. Mm. How many people want to go through that? That is making corruption a high risk. Yeah. When we are doing sting operations and catching people in real time and prosecuting them, like the teachers who are now standing trial in court, that is making corruption a high risk and low return venture. Because your return from corruption will be lower than the risk that you take. But if you don't make it a risky venture, more people will be willing to engage in it. Mm -hmm. And if more people are willing to engage in it, it is a decayed society. It's a society that is falling apart. But the fewer people who engage into it, that is how you know that you have controlled corruption. And the Gambia and other countries in Africa have gone to conferences and told them this, that look, let us stop babying corruption. All these things, uh, prevention, public education, and blah, blah, blah. These are backstopping measures. First take the step, step to eradicate. And you have to do everything necessary to do it. You have to follow what happened in Singapore. You have to follow what happened in China. You have to follow what is happening in Rwanda. You have to follow what happened in Botswana. They did not just get to where they are by coming to sit down. We are all family. You know, uh, we are all coming from the same mother. We circle the same breast. No. Are the you, human are nature you, is are you, are you afraid? Are you scared of your own personal safety, though? This is a very risky job. It is. Are you, are, you, are you scared or are you worried about your personal safety and that of your family? Well, if, I mean, I am one of the most guarded people in Sierra Leone. I mean, I have a convoy of soldiers, military men and bodyguards all the time. My house is like a garrison. You have people sitting down there. Yeah. But what I know is that somebody has to, to do, do this. It. Okay? Yeah. For 18 years, mm -hmm. we had been doing it. The population knew we were not doing much. It was shadow boxing. Somebody has to occupy the space and take it to another level if there has to be a change. And if I am that sacrificial lamb for the country, I am ready to do it. At least, if I leave or if anything happens to me, the people can look and see that this is how it can be done. So to say I am not worried about, well, I am not worried, but yes, I have concerns about my safety. And that is why I am that guarded 
I move around in a convoy of policemen and soldiers. As a young person, I don't want that around me, yeah. but I have to endure that. But somebody has to do it. And it is not every day you have somebody with the courage and heart to take on the fight with that kind of tenacity that I am doing for the country. So um, we leave everything to God. The biggest protection that we can have yes. is the one that comes from above. God knows my heart. He knows that I don't wake up in the morning hating anybody, but I am just doing the job that I have been called to do. And that is what we are doing for the people of Sierra Leone. Is there anybody or group of people that uh, in today's Sierra Leone uh, can, are untouchable under your mandate? No, I have always told the people of Sierra Leone, and I mean this when I say it, the Constitution created one sacred cow, the president. He says the president cannot be prosecuted why he is in office that is the secret cow created by the constitution yeah. every other person is no secret cow as long as i sit in that office mm -hmm. and i have the protection of god and i have the backing of the president of sierra leone nobody is a secret cow but but the president uh, appoints and sat has the power to appoint and sack you right yes he does so 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 um are you are you, are you limited if you have to go after his allies and family or friends. Uh, don't you think your job is, will be at stake if you have to go after anybody who is allegedly involved, especially allies and, and friends? I have always made this clear, okay? Mm -hmm. People on the misunderstand what independence means. I have always told people that when you lead a commission, like the Anti-Corruption Commission, mm -hmm. you cannot over emphasize what independence means. What is most important is autonomy. Mm -hmm. But you are working within the system. Before even I was appointed, there was a flag bearer who promised the people of Sierra Leone that when I become president, I am going to lead a robust fight against corruption. Yeah. Okay? That flag bearer ended up becoming president, the president. And he appointed me to lead that fight. Mm -hmm. The promise that he made to the people of Sierra Leone in the manifesto. Is that what you mean? The promise that he made to the people of Sierra Leone in parliament, when he went to parliament to put before them his plan of action, was to lead a robust fight against corruption. He was not talking about what he was going to do personally. He was talking about what I was going to do, leading the people at the Anti-Corruption Commission to fight corruption. If I am doing it and he does not want it to happen, I will just tell him, I am sorry, sir. I thought you meant this. Okay? But as long as it remains his promise to the people of Sierra Leone, I am the fulfillment of that promise. So, he appoints me, yes. If he does not want me there, will I stay there? No. no. But I believe that if I am there, it is because he has promised it to the people of Sierra Leone. And because he meant it, he needed somebody who wanted to do it. And I have told you the one question that I was asked is, do you have the backbone? Not whether you are competent, whether you are capable of doing it, is do you have the backbone? backbone? And I have shown beyond all reasonable doubt. They used to call the Anti-Corruption Commission a toothless boot dog. Mm. Now the people of Sierra Leone are trying to control the teeth of the dog by putting <laughs> a gag on it so that it does not bite everybody. Wow. So, but that is it. Mm. It is the fulfillment of the promise that that president made to the people of Sierra Leone that I'm doing. If he's no longer willing to do it, why not? I am not desperate. I have two master's degrees. I am an accomplished lawyer. I practice for over 10 years. I have my own law firm. I have my international respect and everything. I would simply tell him, Mr. President, I still continue to believe in you. I am still with you in everything we do, but I think I have to step aside. Let somebody else lead your fight against corruption. So these are all there. But I believe in the current president. Yes. I believe that he really, really wants to see a transform Sierra Leone, and that is why he put me there, and I am doing this. Not just for the people of Sierra Leone, but also for him. And it is his backing. I have always told him that all I want is when I look back, you are standing there. And I believe he will be standing there when I look back. Well, so to the main opposition party, the APC, have accused um, you and the commission of witch hunt. How do you react to that? The facts are there. <laughs> they say numbers don't lie. Numbers don't lie. These same people in the opposition have voluntarily come back with over $2 million after they have been arrested and investigated and they are confronted with the evidence of their loot. That cannot be a wish hunt. If they believe it was a wish hunt, they could have gone to court and defended themselves. 
Okay? These same people, we are recovering houses from them. They are looking at mansions, hotels, and saying, it is not my hotel, but we know you built it. If it was a wish hunt, the man would not deny his own hotel. He would come with his head, head held high and defend that this is my property. It is for my money I built it. These same people took vehicles, hid them in Guinea and other countries. We have gone in Guinea, recovered, and brought them to Sierra Leone. Some of them are standing trial. Okay? The people of Sierra Leone understand. Nobody is going to come and say, yes, I am a criminal. They will always deploy these mechanisms, things like witch hunt, things like tribalism, things like regionalism, playing the political party card, to try to cloud up the system, to muddy up the system, to cover up the good work that we are doing. But the people of Sierra Leone, our work at the ACC is evidence-based. I have told you. I told the people of Sierra Leone from the very first week I was appointed that I am not fighting corruption in hiding. Because I know how dangerous it is when you are fighting corruption in hiding. hiding. So I bring the people along. We get the evidence, we put it out there. You see it for yourself. Yeah. If we say Mr. X stole $10 million, we explain to the people exactly what came. This government, the Japanese government, gave this amount of money to build hospitals in X place. Please, people of Sierra Leone, go to that place and show us the hospitals that are there. If no hospital is standing there, you know that somebody has taken the money. Where is the money? So these are the kinds of things we are doing. So the whole thing about witch hunt was easily dispelled among the population. And now all of them are either hiding in the Gambia, or they are in the U.S., or they are in other countries. countries. But we have a job to do. And we are doing it for the people of Sierra Leone without particularly targeting them. But we look to the evidence and the facts that support our claims. And recently I was uh, following the, the president's uh, um, Facebook page, official Facebook page, and you re recently uh, presented a report, I think, uh, to the president. How often do you present reports to the president? And how often do you prosecute? Is it um, any time you find something that needs to, to go to court, you go to court, or do you put things together before they are prosecuted? Yes, we, we investigate robustly mm -hmm. before we charge to court. Uh, sometimes we don't charge to court. We can look at certain evidence and say, no, the way the nature of this evidence is, we don't have to go to court. We should apply other measures to recover. And sometimes we enter into even settlement agreements with the, with the person to say, look, we believe you stole $1 million. And people are paying. Yes, they are paying. I am telling you, you within you. one year, four months, we have recovered over $2 million. This is fact. Wow. They are paying. They are paying up. And some are on repayment plans right now. The commitment to repay is over 10 billion euros as I speak with you. So basically every month, we know 300 million comes from this politician. They are selling their houses to pay. They are taking debts to pay. It is that decision not to make them get away with it that is most important. It's not even the amount. And that is what is good for a country. For people to know that impunity is not the order of the day. It should be the exception more than the rule. But any country where people still, for example, I was speaking to a Ghanaian recently, and he told me that the head of the public procurement authority was doing business with himself. He was setting up enterprises okay. and then awarding contracts. awarding contracts by restrictive bidding to his own companies. Company. In Sierra Leone today, we held, there is a guy called Abdubari who we held captured in Sierra Leone. He was a, he was a, former deputy minister of works, and he was giving contracts to himself. We took him to court swiftly. He was fined on one count alone 250 million euros, and we took back his hotel, which he built, and gave it to the people of Sierra Leone. That is what you do. And I asked this lady, so what has happened to that man in Ghana? He said, no, the president asked him to step aside. No, he should be in prison. He should be in prison. If you don't do that, you don't make corruption a high risk and low return venture. So these are the kinds of things really that we are trying to work on to see how we can bring a really lasting social transformation for Sierra Leone. I mean, it all, uh, I think for most African countries, there has to be the political will as well. In Gambia, we, we, we are yet to set up an anti-corruption uh, commission. The president uh, last week, um, during his State of the Nation address, did announce that in December, Gambia government will table the, uh, the bill at the parliament. This is something that a lot of Gambians have looked forward to. For example, us in the media, we have to get sources in the government to be able to even smuggle uh, information, documents that are really should be public documents. Um, but 
for a country like Gambia that is looking forward to set up a, a, a commission like this, what do you think should be the fundamentals that should not lack for us to have a proper commission like yours? The first thing you have to do, like I told you, the foundation has to be strong law. You see, the body politic in Africa have a way of deceiving the populace. Mm -hmm. They create a mirage. They set up systems that is a give and take. They give you a commission that has no power. They set up structures around it for it to be toothless. They make the laws deliberately weak. They make the enforcement mechanisms not to be there. So what I can advise you is that your civil society has to be active. Let them come to Sierra Leone. I have one of the strongest amendments that I have tabled right now in Parliament. Okay? I am ready to supply it to the Gambia. Yeah. Because if a government is serious about fighting corruption, it is known by the law it passes. It passes. How well it strengthens the institution. How independent the institution is to fight the corruption. This, the mechanisms that are there to set up come to us who we'll give you i am ready to provide pro bono service to the people of gambia for them to set up a robust anti-corruption system because we are sister countries what happens in sierra leone reflects what happens in gambia people will make examples of what is happening in the gambia i don't want that right now those who have looted the resources of the country are sitting down in the gambia comfortably doing business if you had robust anti-corruption systems would we'll have mutual legal assistance for us to deal with them I want that to happen in the Gambia. So I am ready to provide the services. I am ready to provide the, the strategy. We just launched a new anti-corruption strategy to fight corruption, which is, by the way, one of the strongest also in Africa. I'm ready to supply all those yeah. so that you first have the laws. Yeah. Once you have the laws, I have told you the other three pillars. There are four pillars. Strong law, political will, presidential will, the courage of the anti-corruption fighters. We will not be able to assess the courage of the anti-corruption fighters for now, but let us have the law. So, civil society, the young people, all of you, keep your eyes on the ball. Yeah. What law are you going to get in December will be very important for you. It's very important. And finally, before we go, I know you, as one of the, the most, uh, 30 most influential uh, young people in Africa, um, are you optimistic about you know, the role the youths are playing in our society? Uh, many a times, the young people are not involved in politics, and it's the politicians that, you know, decided our daily livelihoods and this is going to affect the youth in the future are you really optimistic about the way the young people in africa are, are, are looking at things yes um you see the young people are a product of their society what they have done to africa is for a long time to make the abnormal look normal. Mm. So young people growing sometimes confused as to what really is the normal. Okay? What is happening now, there is a social transformative wave across Africa where young people are taking up the challenge. Yeah. In the Gambia here, for example, I have young people, there is a friend of mine called Ma. He's engaged with follow the money and things like that who are coming up to demand change, to demand conscientious change. Yesterday we were at the Karaba Hotel. Young people were talking about the setting up of the Anti-Corruption Commission and the need for it to be modeled on what we are doing in Sierra Leone. Okay, and I, have no, I know they are going to agitate for it. Young people are coming forward in Sierra Leone now. Young people are occupying very important positions and are producing results for the country. My being an example of it. There is hope. There is hope. If we, they say, when you are converted, you strengthen your brethren. If you and I, who are still very young, are now in this position, let us use the platforms we have, like I am doing now, yeah. to send the right message to them. So that they know that the abnormal is not normal. I will tell you a story, okay? Mm. The story of the cobweb. When you live in this house, you have very nice furniture and everything, and there's a cobweb on that furniture. Okay? With time, you think the cobweb is part of your furniture. Yeah. You see it there every day, you go about your business. Mm -hmm. In fact, you start liking it because it creates a very nice design on your furniture. Yeah. But one day, a stranger will come 
And he says, what is this on your furniture? He says, it's my furniture. He says, no, that's not your furniture. That's a cobweb. No, 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 but it's, no, 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 it's a cobweb. Mm -hmm. And suddenly, your eyes open. Lo and behold, it is a cobweb. That is what we have to do. We have to continue pointing out the cobweb in our sister countries. Because they get comfortable with what they live in. Once we do that, we can be able to help ourselves to do the transformation. We can do comparative analysis of what is happening in different countries. And then we can be able to have the social revolution that cut across borders. I want one day to come to Gambia and sit with people who are young today who are now in leadership positions. And we remember this conversation that we have and how it had effect in creating a robust anti-corruption commission for the Gambia. And the same thing in Sierra Leone. I want you to go to Sierra Leone and also remember our conversation you had and the things you pointed out that we are using to do change. But I'm very hopeful about the future of Africa. I believe the young people are ready to take up the challenge. They know that this is abnormal and we have to do something about it. And the time is now. And before we go, how would you want to be remembered when you leave the ACC? What's, what would you want to be your legacy? I just want to see a Sierra Leone that prospers. Mm. I want my own children to go to a public school yeah. and have the same opportunities as those in the private schools. I want people to have a minimum life of dignity. Good salaries for teachers, for staff and everybody. I want our economy to be competitive with other countries. I want to be remembered as somebody who played a role in that social transformation, and that is all I want. Would we ever see uh, President Francis Ben Kayafela ever? Well, um, the future really is there. Um, I am not waking up every day wanting that, and trust me, what I am doing now has no such desires and intentions behind it. If this is the only thing I can do for my people, let me do it now and leave the stage. Let other people pick up from there and become presidents and become people, but let it be done now so that tomorrow I can live in my little corner and enjoy the good that comes from my country that is competitive, that is fair, that is transparent, that is responsive, and that is accountable. That is all I want. That is all. That is all. Wow. And finally, going through your Twitter feed, I saw something um, you called yourself the uh, Ben the feminist. Tell us the feminist side of you. Yes, I am a very, I'm very <laughs> conscious of, uh, of, of, I mean, I am, I am a feminist. I honestly believe that yeah. for a country to succeed, you cannot leave the majority of the population in obscurity. Mm -hmm. And I don't know of an African country where there are more men than women. Yeah. So any country that does not remove the barriers that stand in the way of women attaining their potentials, as equally as men, that country cannot succeed. So because I'm aware of that, I believe we should give women equal opportunities, we should give them equal space, we should give them equal support. Because that is the partnership that will change the country. And for example, when I'm leading the commission, I'm very conscious. If I have meetings, I'm always looking how many women are present. If I am making appointments, I'm trying to see how women are represented in those appointments. It's basically a kind of way of life that we have to inculcate, understanding that society would not succeed by leaving the majority of the population in obscurity as has been happening in Africa. So I really want to see that happen and I think women should be given the opportunity to lead. And your first lady is definitely doing a great job. We just saw her launch the Hands of the Girls campaign in Sierra Leone, yes. uh, which is a great initiative and I think that is a noble initiative. We have a very strong first lady. Yes. Who obviously has well, she's a, our sister. You are our in-laws. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. But she's doing a great job, great job with her yeah. initiative in Sierra Leone. Mm -hmm. She has the tenacity, she has the ability, and I admire her a lot. Yeah. And I think that uh, what she is doing with the hands of our girls' campaign is a really good tool that is also going to have lasting effect on Sierra Leone. So ben, thank you very much. For thank this you very interview. much, Patrick. Thank you very thank much. You so much. Thank and you so much. this brings us to the end of this interview. I want to thank uh, Mr. Ben for the short uh, notice uh, granting us this interview. Thank you very much. And to you, our viewers, thank you very much for watching. And good night to you all. See you next week. Thank you. Bye-bye.